Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Um, I've got something a little bit different to try again today. I'm always saying that, aren't I? <laughs> I do try a lot of different things. <laughs> but this is something I haven't, uh, I definitely haven't tried before. So we don't know if it's going to work or not, but let's try, shall we? Let's go. Enough dithering. Let's go straight to the desk. I've been having a scholar box for several years now, four or five years now. And I've ended up with a lot of these A5 size pads, which tend to go in there. Not always, but it's usually A4 paper pads because of the size of the box. I don't work too well on small, in, in a small size. So quite often I will cut them up and join them together and do all sorts of <laughs> things to, uh, to give me more scope to work on. And don't get me wrong, it's lovely to have them because you get to try all these different types of papers. You can swatch your supplies on them and, and find what kinds of papers you like. And, and quite often I've gone out and love the paper so much that I've gone out and bought bigger pads <laughs> so but I end up not working in these again and, and and I have a couple of drawers full of these so the first inspiration for this little project I'm going to try today was these find a way to make these more usable for me the January school box we got this as our as our sketch pad it's a concertina sketch pad I love it. You've got all these different surfaces to, to work on. It's double thickness all the way through and it's quite sturdy paper. So yeah, you've got all those different surfaces to work on. Loved it. And my friend Gabby actually gave me a bigger version of this. I think it's sea white, a bigger version of this, an A4 size, which I'm also thoroughly enjoying working on. I'm doing my badass art journal in there. So I thought, I wonder if I could make better use of these smaller size papers by turning them into my own concertina sketchbooks another part of the <laughs> what inspired this project is that i had this gorgeous wrapping paper that i got on a birthday present thank you very much claire <laughs> and it's lovely it's really nice and soft feeling and strong um and really pretty and i thought well i'm not gonna even use that to wrap up a my present i'm gonna try and use that to cover a little sketchbook or something with. i've also got all of these nice sturdy backs really tough grey board these I have on the back and um, that I can use for the backs of my sketchbook and <laughs> I've got this now this was a present for my lovely sister Mandy thank you Mandy it was a set of six coasters and they've all got these koi carp on it's two pairs out uh, of three pairs so three kind of pairs of matching designs and, it, and this lovely paperweight which has taken up permanent residence on my desk because it's beautiful and I just love the feel of it I just love to feel it yeah it, it's it's a bit like uh, I don't know about anybody else but do you ever get that urge to lick glass because it's so smooth <laughs> well it's like that but obviously it's not really a good idea to lick glass it's not very hygienic and it makes you look crazy but you know but this yeah love it so but I already have the coasters although they're gorgeous I already have a couple of sets of coasters so I I don't I could make I could uh, make space for them but I don't really need them so I'm thinking it might be better to make something with them where I would kind of enjoy this lovely design so I thought aha they could be that each pair could be the front and back cover of a little square concertina sketchbook and that would be perfect for doing little zen tangles in zen tangle tangles in because another thing i've been wanting to pick up again that i haven't done for ages is zen tangle and working in square tiles is is the classic isn't it zen tangle so i mean and potentially i could make three up i might not have enough paper even to do them all now but i could save them and do more later so that's my plan and these are just a few I have a couple drawers full of these ends of, of A4 pads sometimes like last time I finished up the whole pad and I cut it all up and made it into something and I used it all up but not always <laughs> so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the sort of heavier weight paper so that's acrylic that's watercolour paper that's watercolour paper they're heavier weight and they've got a little bit of texture to them and they'll be for making this bigger concertina but I've also pulled out this gorgeous hand made kind of textured paper with a gold fleck in it which coordinates really well on that make that'll be nice for the kind of inside inside covers if that makes sense so I've got that oh so that's my I'll make them into a little sketchbook and then I've got the smoother, this, this is very smooth, white card, 
250 GSM uncoated paper, cartridge paper. Not quite so smooth, but still relatively smooth. And that's quite smooth. I wonder whether to just stick with the ones that are all very white. These are very really white, aren't they? Yeah, keep that one aside. I love this. This is one that um, I did go out and buy more of. It's just really nice for doing graphite. I, I really enjoyed doing graphite drawings on that one. Right. So I've got these to make the Zentangle ones with because they're smooth and I like to work on smooth white card or paper for Zentangle. Yep, so that would be perfect. I think I'm going to do the big one first. And the only other things I've got handy... Oh, I've got my my old manky old guillotine obviously you could do it without that if you wanted to Let's put those out the way i won't need those just yet i've got my paper folder to press my paper down with and i've got some normal double-sided tape and extra strong double-sided tape and some tacky glue at the moment i think that's all i'm going to need oh my long and short scissors don't know i'm going to need that but the handy there and a pencil and a, and a ruler just in case one of these T-squares, so they can be quite handy to get, get them lining straight. Okay, shove all that other stuff out of the way. So shove, shovel, shovel. And I'm going to start by taking all of these papers out of the pads. Okay, so I'm going to take these out of the pads to start with. Maybe I should do it all in this lighter weight one. This is probably enough of it. And I'm going to double it up anyway. Yeah. Okay, let's put the heavier ones aside just for a minute. And now I'm just going to fold each one just in half. Keep it simple. So I'm going to fold it in half like that and then give it a press with my paper folder. Obviously you could use, you could just use your thumbnail to be honest, or whatever you like. But I've got this handy, so you got the tool, you may as well use it. So I've got them all folded. Obviously, you could just turn this into a sketchbook by putting them together in signatures of five or, or whatever, and uh, or, or whatever you want to do, and I find them into a little sketchbook in the normal way. But I really like the idea, and I'm quite glad now this, I've ended up with this quite lightweight cartridge paper. Um, I like the idea of turning it into a concertina book because, as I say, I find it quite difficult working on in, in a smaller scale, so I think. This will give me more scope because I can spread that way. <laughs> and I've just, I, I, what I love, one of the things I love to do is to cut holes in one layer and peek through to the next layer so you can do that, this kind of thing as well. So I think what I'm going to do is put them together like that, put a line of the double sided tape there and there. So each, I'll end up with it will be kind of double thickness, which should help because this paper is, is not too heavy it should help not to get any kind of show through or bleed through um, and then I'll leave that bit in the middle open because there's also the potential to use that as a pocket and put things in that will show through peepholes and stuff <laughs> so I can play <laughs> um, so yeah all I'll, sh I'll show you one because I mean it's pretty straightforward okay second go in I think I've worked out a better way of doing it so I've put my two strips of double sided tape there I want this piece to go on like that so I'm just flipping it over so I know I know what this is the surface I want to connect here I'm gonna line this up so the side edges here and here line up. I'm not butting that edge right up against the fold because if I do that, it's not going to want to fold. It's going to stop it folding. So it's just a fraction, just even just a millimetre is enough just to give it enough room to fold. I've put my tape on. I've burnished it down with my paper folder. I'm going to pick off the backing paper. I'm just going to fold it back a little bit like that and then I'm going to fold this over when I'm happy I've moved it again and I'm happy that my side edges are lined up and I'm evenly and I'm all lined up here just about just a, a, a millimetre or so 
away from the fold and now I'm going to fold that shut press there where that sticky bit is and now I can I can just pull away that other little end of the backing tape oops last bit to off last little bit to off okay and then I could press that down now I've ended up making that one a little bit too far away from the fold but I'm not going to worry about it too much um, and I think once I'm not trying to do it in front of the camera I probably won't do that again okay let's carry on Next one, I want to go like that. Okay, so I'm going to put the tape here. We're not putting the tape right up next to the fold because you don't want a sticky bit to be exposed because that would get really annoying. really hoping this is going to be a way of me making use of these little pads of paper because they're always nice quality paper I'll just crease that now they're always nice quality paper um, and it's just a shame to waste them okay so i'm going to want that going on that way so i'm flipping it over i'm going to line this up with the side edges we'll try and get a little bit nearer to the fold this time but not too near check that it will fold take off the backing tape probably would be easier if that was going that way a bit nearer fold it over away the rest of the backing tape there we go. okay I'm going to work through now and then I'll just come back and show you it. I've um, folded and stuck together all my pages so that's going to be a nice yeah a nice uh, size of sketchbook and then I've taken a couple of the backs of the sketch pads deliberately picked the less heavyweight ones so they're easy enough for me to cut because they don't need to be too heavyweight and then I've cut them I'll cut the first one just to be slightly bigger all around than the than my folded pages so that was 16 by 12 so I'll do the same thing again these tea rulers are so handy so 16 by 12 and because I picked the slightly <laughs> lighter weight I can just cut it with these scissors I like using these long straight scissors I think they're meant for wallpaper but when you wanted to cut a long straight line in cardboard or paper the longer the scissors the easier it is there we go keep there in case I want them in a minute they be the same yes and I fished this out of um, one of my bizarre scrap packs because I'm going to use this for the um, closure so lovely this paper it feels soft almost fabricy. And now 
I'm going to use this to kind of wrap this cover. I think I'm going to need a little bit of glue um, to cover the surface rather than just, I could just turn it under and put tape there and there but I feel like I want to glue the surface as well. I'm going to go for this. It's quite nice because it, <laughs> it looks blue when it goes on but it dries clear so if any uh, you know it's not going to show so I'm just going to sort of roughly centre that on the decorative paper give it a good give it a good burnish down so this is probably going to wobble the camera can't be helped now I want to just mitre these edges so I don't get any yeah I think that'll work so I'm just going to turn each of these corners under I might just put a little dob of that glue to hold it down so I'm just using my little paper folder just to burnish everything down and work into those corners like that just to end up making sure everything's properly stuck and I'm going to get a nice neat finish on it no it's really not look see this is what happens I'll just show you okay. it's very hard with this tape okay I'm going to have to go with this mm. oh this stronger glue I'm going to try this stronger glue I don't I just have a feeling that the tacky glue isn't going to hold it quickly enough I need something that's going to grab quickly so I'm going to put some of this right near the edge and a little bit up the middle as well hopefully that should do it because that's like a spirit based glue it will grab it, it will dry and grab much quicker so, so it, gives you, it does give quite a neat finish and then the next one will go down like that so I'm going to work my way around and do that and then I'll come back to you I have finished covering both my covers I need to make sure I remember when I come to put them on to get them both the right way up because there is a right way up to this paper and then I've got two pieces out of that decorative uh, kind of handmade paper to be to go on the inside of the covers I've just cut them a little bit smaller and then I've also got I've just cut one of the little leftover pieces I'm going to put this on the front cover and I thought about just um, doing a little stamped word or something on there on a piece of white but actually I think I'm going to do this because I've got some of these book plates that I've had hanging around for ages and then I can just slot whatever I want inside there on, on a little piece of paper to make a title so I've picked out two little brads to attach that with I'm hoping they're going to be long enough to go through so I need to attach that before I put the decorative paper on, on top to cover it all and I've also dug out this bit of ribbon for the closure and that will also need to be attached to here before I put this on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I think it's going to be really cool. Let's first of all stick this on. I think I'm going to have to go for this paper again, this blue again. Put some around the edge. I'm not putting it all over. It's not going to take a lot of strain this, so and the brads will hold it on a bit as well. So I'm just going to sort of centre that on there. And while I've got the glue open, let's just put a little, little bit there. Put the ribbon on. So I'm going to fold that in. Whoops. Oh, wobbling everything. Oh, <laughs> fold that in half, roughly. <laughs> make a little, and make a little loop. Let's just flatten that loop, and then when the decorative paper goes on, that will hold it. That will hold it down. Just put a little bit there. So now I need to think about where I want that to go and I need my pokey pokey tool I'll just make some little guide holes first and then I need to think about how I'm going to get a big enough hole through there I might need to get the old crocodile out but we'll see okay so I've got my little guide holes but obviously they're not big enough I'm going to go for this slightly bigger one I'm just 
to enlarge the hole so that's nice and nice big hole now plenty big enough <laughs> might even be too big right so now i can put that on there put a little brads through yeah i think that'd be all right i'll have to put a bit of tape over that as well in a minute just to be sure but it's not going to take a lot of uh, stress is it so i'll do a little um stamped word on a piece of white paper and just pop it in there when i've decided what it what it's going to be called it looks really cute doesn't it okay this one should be stuck nicely now <clears throat> so now i'm just gonna and i'm gonna go with this strong glue again i think so i don't want the paper all buckling with the with the pva so i'm putting the glue on this piece not that piece i mean it could go on the the middle of that one but if I go around the edge of this piece there's a danger I might end up with my glue showing <laughs> so place that neatly on there lovely snippet of white to go in there just to show what it'll look like done right so that's um that's my front cover now i need to make sure i get this one the right way around when i stick them together i must forget that so now i need to stick this piece on it in the same way and i'm almost done that's my back cover all ready to go and once that's fully dried that should be nice and secure there where the, where the ribbon is um, so now I just need to add this so again because this is the smaller piece that I'm going to put my glue on here so I don't want it to end up showing let's go around the edges that's it that's the front so I need to make sure they're both the same way up yes and now so it's going to go that way flip it over and I want that surface to attach here so now this time I'm going to just line up the two covers getting a lot of notifications got a little harp orchestra going on in the background that's better there we go very chuffed with that so i just need to get a little couple of beads and then i will that's the way i'll probably close it but um you know say for example say i ended up doing a bit of kind of collage in here and it got a little bit fat i've got plenty of room for expansion there and it'll look really nice to display like that as well really really happy with that okay i'm going to find a couple of beads to go on the end and then i'm going to do exactly the same thing really with these i'm just going to be cutting the paper smaller and um, i might use something like a sharpie or something on the edges just to color those so they don't look like cork just color them black i think they'll look better um, and the inside will all be black and white zentangle so i think that'll work well um yeah, I like the idea because they call them tiles as entangled with the kind of squares you start off in. Um, I just really like, yeah, I think I think this is going to be a lovely way to use these. I'm not going to go through the whole process with these again because it's really just the same. I'm just cutting the paper to a, a smaller size. Um, so where and I'm using all the smooth, obviously. So yeah, I will probably just work out should be able to get two squares easily out of here I want it to end up being smaller just a little bit smaller than the square and um, I have actually got where is it I've got a corner puncher 
yeah so I might use that to round the corners to echo what's on there what I've done with these is um, I've measured my little coaster it's 10 centimeters I've decided to allow about half a centimeter all around so I'm, my square needs to be nine so then I took my piece of um, smooth drawing paper that I've got there and worked out that I could easily fit two squares on there so I need to cut these down to 18 lengthways by nine that way and I just ended up with some little bits left over I will keep these because I'll use these for stamping greetings on when I'm making cards and stuff like that so I've just got two pieces here to show you and then I'll I'll whiz through so I'm going to fold each piece in half like I did with the other paper And then I will tape them together like I did, like I did before. I will probably use my corner puncher, just corner rounder rather, just to round the corners of these. And then I will use something like one of these. That'd be a good one, actually, permanent marker, just to go all around the edges to make all of that black. So I'm going to whisk through and do that pretty much the same process as before. I'll come back and show you how they look at the end. I am finished. I'm really happy with how these turned out. So I've put the little beads on the end of here so I can just use this as a little kind of, you know, casual closure. If it gets really fat, I can um, I can tie it like this instead, you know. I've got, I've, got to, I've got a bit of flexibility there. I can decide what I'm going to call it later on. And I've got all those pages of lovely paper to play with. Thrill to bits with that. Okay, so that's that. And then this is my one that's going to be for the um, Zentangle. Now I went a bit crooked with some of these. You can see if you look closely. But pff, I'm not going to give give myself any grief over that. I think it's fine. Um, I like that. Again, I've got. I can use both. Whoops! I can use both sides, so I can do an awful lot of Zentangle on here. Um, before I run out of space and then I can make another one <laughs> I love that I really like it and I could um, I could keep it in a little box can I <laughs> look at that fits perfectly so yeah really really chuffed it's so nice when a project turns out um, turns out how, how you hoped it would <laughs> So uh, that's all That's all for me for today. I hope you enjoyed that um, little idea. Thank you very much for joining me today and I will see you again really soon.